Sully here, the retired tacky anchor. Welcome to Transitions, my YouTube channel, where I display my <clears throat> musical talents, among other things. If you're new to my channel, or if you're a returning visitor, I would appreciate it if you would uh, hit that uh, subscribe button. It's uh, right down here. Here it is. Click on it. Wasn't that easy? Now, in my latest video, I noticed something. Now, sometimes it takes a discerning ear to notice certain subtle, well, you know, issues with your guitar. But in this clip, I noticed a slight buzz when I played my D and G strings open. Now, this is uh, called fret buzz. And it can be caused by a few different issues. One of them is a warm nut. Now, my guitar is only about two years old, and it's unusual to have nut wear on an instrument this young. The most common cause to this problem is a condition called up bow or a lack of neck relief. Uh, you want the neck to actually go up a little bit like this. And uh, the best thing to do when you're setting up a guitar is when the strings are off, the neck should be perfectly straight. When the strings are on and under tension, you get a slight amount of what's called back bow. And this is also called relief. So I looked down the neck of my guitar, and sure enough, I didn't have enough relief. Now, I have never attempted to adjust the truss rod on this guitar since I bought it. It was set up by a competent tech. I bought it at uh, Antique Instruments in Philadelphia, which uh, is a shop which is owned by uh, a fellow by the name of Fred Oster who is uh, not only a Martin Certified Technician and hires Martin Certified Technicians, but he also works on a lot of the instruments for members of the Philadelphia Orchestra. But the tech who set this guitar up did a great job on it, but you know, certain things happen as time marches on. Now, I may have mentioned in the past that I used to have a Martin DX1. And while that thing had that Stratobond neck, which usually requires very little adjustment, from time to time, it needed to be tweaked. So I bought this thing here. This is a truss rod adjusting tool for Martin guitars. It's, it's sort of like an Allen key wrench, but it's longer to reach the adjustment nut on Martin's, and it has this little ball doohickey on the end. That prevents the, the adjusting nut from being stripped. Right, take a good look at it. Okay, now, I subscribe to a channel called Rosa Stringworks. It's the YouTube channel of Jerry Rosa, who is a luthier and a musician from Missouri. And I watch his videos to pick up tech tips. And his tip in such a situation is to provide neck relief by loosening the truss rod. Now, I really don't know what caused the problem in, in the first place, uh, but it might be due to the unusually cold spring we've had here in the Delaware Valley. And quite frankly, my apartment has been freezing for the past few days. I got a feeling that the building super turned off the heat in the building or something like that. Anyway, to make a long story short, I loosened the truss rod about a third of a turn. And I tuned the old axe up and hooray, 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 the fret buzz was gone. Sure makes me glad that I spent the $4 on this little handy doohickey. Because it probably saved me about $120 to have it professionally adjusted. And since places like Sam Ash and Guitar Center are closed anyway, I wouldn't have had my guitar to play to make this video. Okay, let's get down to the video. I'm, I'm bowing to my younger sister, Maggie. So she likes sea songs, so I thought I'd do another sea song. Except that this one isn't a sea song. It's a lake song. This particular song was written by the late Canadian folk singer Stan Rogers. Rogers, as I have mentioned before, was probably the finest folk musician, maybe one of the finest musicians, period, that Canada has ever produced. His heritage is from the Maritimes, and though he was born and lived in Ontario, his music was greatly influenced by his family ties to Nova Scotia. Uh, he did decide to make some albums about the other parts of Canada. Uh, shortly before his passing, he recorded an album called From Fresh Water which was about life in the Great Lakes region. The album came out after his death in 1983. Stan was one of 27 people who perished on Air Canada Flight 797 in the Greater Cincinnati Airport. 
Apparently a fire broke out in the lavatory of the aircraft, and while the pilot successfully landed the plane, by the time it landed, the cabin was filled with smoke, and once the doors were open, oxygen allowed the smoldering fire to become an inferno. Only about half of the passengers were able to get off. Stan was 33 years old. He left us with a legacy of some of the most haunting songs that folk music has ever seen. He had that common touch when it came to songwriting, and he was a fierce Canadian nationalist who celebrated his native land. And this song is taken from, from Freshwater. It's called White Squall. And I hope you enjoy it. Now it's just my luck to have a watch. Nothing left to do. Watch the deadly waters glide as we roll north to the Sioux. Wonder when they'll turn again and pitch us to the rail and hurl off one more youngster in the gale. The kid was so damn eager, it was all so big and new. You never had to tell him twice or find him work to do. Evenings on the mess deck, he was always first to sing and show us pictures of the girl he'd wed in the spring. But I told that kid a hundred times, don't take the lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred, not so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight, some red-eyed Wyarton girl, I stare in at the wall. And her lover's gone into a white squall. Now it's a thing that us old timers know in a sultry summer calm. There comes a blow from nowhere and it goes off like a bomb. And a 15,000 tonner can be thrown upon her beam. While the gale takes all before it in a scream. The kid was on the hatches, land staring at the sky. From where I stood, I swear I could see tears fall from his eye. So I hadn't the heart to tell him that he should be on a line, even on a night so warm and fine. Told that kid a hundred times, don't take the lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred, not so fast they seem enchanted. But tonight, some red eyed Wyarton girl, I stare in at the wall, and her lover's gone into a white squall. Struck, he shut up with a start. I roared to him, get down. But for all that he could hear, I could as well not made a sound. So I clung there to the stanchion, and I felt my face grow pale as he crawled hand over hand along the rail. Now I could feel her heeling over with the fury of the blow. Watch the rail go under them, so terrible and slow. Then like some great dog, she shook herself, rolled upright again. Far overside, I heard him call my name. But I told that kid a hundred times, don't take the lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred, not so fast they seem enchanted. Tonight, some red-eyed Wyarton girl, I stare in at the wall, and her lover's gone into a white squall. So it's just my luck to have a watch with nothing left to do, but watch the deadly waters glide as we roll north to the sea. 
wonder when she'll turn again and pitch us to the rail and hurl off one more youngster in the gale. I tell these kids a hundred times, don't take the lakes for granted. They go from calm to a hundred, not so fast, they seem enchanted. But tonight, some red-eyed, wire-tin girl, I stare in at the wall, and her lover's gone into a white squall. That's it. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to share this video and to subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, pay a visit to Rosa Stringworks. Who knows, you might learn something. I surely did. Thanks, Jerry, and thanks for, to you all for watching this video. For Transitions, this is Sully, the retired tanker yanker. Safe and happy travels, everybody. <laughs>